Hey guys, what is up? Spartan85 here, just getting back from PAX East in Boston, and let me tell you, I'm wore out, but it's a good wore out. I had a blast out there. PAX East, if you guys have even considered or thought about going to PAX East but haven't pulled the trigger or haven't been in a few years, I highly recommend it. It's an amazing time, and everybody's super nice, and I love Boston. Boston is just amazing. But I wanted to sit down and kind of compose my thoughts and all the news that I learned about Seven Days to Die and Blood Moons into a video for you guys and put a nice little bow on it, basically. There was the live stream. If you guys missed that, it's still on my channel. If you want to go catch the rest of the live stream, it's about two hours long. We interviewed a couple of the devs. There's a bunch of footage on there. I will say it's not the greatest video quality because I'm using well, my iPhone 11, <laughs> and, and we didn't have the greatest connection there. It is a lot of people there, and it's in a giant convention center. I have also thrown up a couple videos on my YouTube channel of me playing Seven Days That I console version on uh, the PS5 there. They also had it for the Xbox One and all that stuff, but, and I also threw up a video of me playing Blood Moons. So if you wanna check those out, those are on my channel. But in this video, I'm just gonna throw some B-roll up of me playing the game, other people playing the game, some videos of the stream, and some pictures of our trip to Boston. Now Steve is going to be working on an actual video of our trip, so if you want to catch that, he's check out his channel, Steve underscore 1945. And also I want to shout out uh, Hourglass Enigma. I'll put him down in the description also with Steve uh, for helping out with the live stream and just being a cool dude to hang out with. We had a lot of fun with him. Okay, on to what you guys are here for, the news of Seven Days to Die console version. I'm gonna do my best to try to organize my thoughts and everything. I have it written down on a notebook, so if I jump around a little bit, I apologize, but I'm just gonna spout the news that we learned. And uh, some of it we already know, but some of it is some new stuff. Number one, and what everybody wants to know, is a release date. And what I kept getting from everybody involved with Seven Days to Die and the Fun Pimps is summer. Summer of this year. Now, we don't have a particular date. They did kind of tell me something that I'm not allowed to spread. Uh, it, me off the record so until they tell me and i can put that on the record i gotta keep it to myself but it's looking like summer of this year and that will release to playstation 5 xbox series x and s and i'll have some more details about the s that is i don't know pretty interesting it will be called seven days to die console edition the apocalypse edition name was only a placeholder that is gone it will be released named as seven days to die console version I tried to nail them down on a price point. They wouldn't really give me one, but when I said 60, they gave me a really alarmed face, like, oh my God, no, not that high. And when I kind of said 30, they are more comfortable with that. And even they thought 30 was a little high, just a little bit. So that's our price point we're looking at. It's definitely not gonna be a $60 game, probably in the 20 to 30 range. They are still wanting to do a voucher that is still in Microsoft and Sony's hands for the voucher and how they would do it. We don't really know, but basically if you own a hard copy or I, I guess a digital copy of the original Seven Days to Die console version that's you know out there right now, the old Alpha 15 version, you would basically be given a coupon or a discount. They are still very on board with that. All the devs I talked to really want to do that. They want to give something back. It's just not a decision they can make on their own. Microsoft and Sony have to be on board also. The game will release as Alpha 22. Uh, one of them kind of hinted at Alpha 22 needs to be well done, needs to be stable to then it'll release to console. So I don't know if we will have like a streamer weekend for Alpha 22 and then we will have an Alpha 22 build on Steam that everybody can play. And once it goes stable, it will come to console. So we might have a streamer weekend for Alpha 22 like we normally do and then it'll release to consoles later. I don't really know the details on that, but I kind of heard that they want they would like Alpha 22 to be stable, and then it'll, they'll release that version consoles. The game we played at PAX East is a demo, and it's a, it's a limited demo. I was able to venture out in, like they start you in uh, Dyersville. I did venture outside Dyersville, and I explored a lot of the map, and everything is there. It's just we're kind of limited right now. And if anybody wondering who was there from the Fun Pimps, it was Latham, who is uh, Fubar Prime on Twitch, and then Alan, who was uh, extremely helpful. Mad shout out to Alan, really liked the guy. Uh, Pocket Ninja, who's all a tester, but she's also on Twitch, was there also. And uh, she was extremely helpful too. You see her in the stream a lot. The Fun Pimps really want crossplay. They understand the importance of crossplay for longevity and just having more people playing 
So they really want crossplay. From what I understand, and this is kind of a general statement too about all gaming, but they're also running into it themselves is Sony is the one that they're having to have the most trouble with right now. Uh, so <laughs> get a hold of Sony guys, call Sony and tell them we well, want seven days to die crossplay. I don't think that's gonna work, but they really want crossplay. Microsoft is on board uh, fighting Sony right now. And I did bring up the fact that a lot of the community is worried that this game is gonna launch and it's never gonna get updates because that's kind of what happened the first time. And I wasn't definitely accusing them of that. I was just bringing it up. You know, there are some apprehensive people about updates and they said, yes, we understand that. This game will get the updates that PC gets. It may not get the unstable builds, but it should get the stable updates. Or it might even get, it might even wait till Alpha 23 comes out and they will release that onto consoles but it will get updates. This will not just be a release and then they're done. It will continue getting updates on console. And one thing they brought up too, because I, I see a lot of flack that people give this game about being in early access on Steam and an alpha on Steam. But if you think about it, it's not totally, I'm not trying to be a fanboy and I'm not trying to give them every out they possibly can, but they did tell me Steam gives you free updates. As a game, you can have as many free updates as you want if you're an alpha or early access. Once you go gold or once you go out of early access, you have to pay for those updates, every single one. So it helps out a small dev team like the Fun Pimps that doesn't have the resources to just keep pumping out updates like Fortnite, Minecraft, GTA, and stuff like that. So it does help a smaller dev. Uh, and that's, that's Steam, that's not the Fun Pimps. That is something Steam does gives you, allows you to do free updates. So just keep that in mind. I do see a lot of hate about them being in early access for so long, but it does allow us to get all these free updates. And what other game does that? You can, I mean, I bought the game for seven bucks on Steam and I've continued to get updates for four years. So I think that's pretty cool. Like I said, I'm not trying to be a fanboy. I'm just putting that information out there. That's their side of the story why they've been in early access for so long. This one, this one hurt a little bit, but it will not have any mod support ever and never, basically. It will never have any mod support on console. So we won't have Darkness Falls. We won't have Ravenhurst. We won't have, you know, Propocalypse or Outback Roadies. So that does suck. And I brought up, man, let me look at Skyrim. I mean, they're still adding mods for Skyrim to this day and they still pump in Oblivion and stuff like that. But yes, we don't have any mods for console if you want to play mods you gotta get a pc i'm sorry guys and i did ask if alpha 22 all the all the pois it's going to be on alpha 22 on pc will be on console and they said yes and i i asked them how many new pois are going to be on alpha 22 i've seen the ones on twitter but they said a lot uh they didn't know the exact amount because i mean it was busy at pax east but they said there's a lot of brand new pois coming to alpha 22 and consoles and they might email me a list of those so I can get those out to you so we just know. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a lot of new POIs coming to Alpha 22 in general, and consoles is gonna get just a humongous plethora of new POIs if you've ever played PC version. And this one hurts too, guys. Um, no split screen, and we're never gonna have split screen on console. And I did ask the reason for that, it's the limitations of the Xbox Series S. And that's gonna be uh, a recurring theme throughout the rest of this video maybe, is the limitations of the Xbox Series S. They are limited. And there were a few other reasons, I think, too, why it's not gonna have split screen, because I, I was kinda like, well, why can't you just add split screen to the PS5 version, maybe? So if people want to play split screen, maybe they can switch over to Sony, or the Sony people have it, but that's the main reason was the limitations of the Series S. And also the Series S will probably only load and run 6K maps. I think Navis Gain's an 8K map, so it's gonna have to be able to run Navis Gain. But the PS5 and the Xbox Series S should run up to a 12K map. Definitely an 8K. It should run up to 12K. So uh, if you are playing on the Xbox Series S, which I am, random world generated maps, you can only do a 6K map, most likely, is what they're thinking. And that's another limitation of the Series S. This one hurts for uh, us creators, but there will be no debug menu and there'll be no dev tools on console. And the reason for that was also the limitations of the Series S. That was the reason for that. But, and what, if you don't know what that may, means, you can go to the debug menu, you can change the date and time, you can change the weather, you can go invisible, you can go into God mode. The dev tools are the, the destroy all block, destroy all zombies and stuff like that. So, and you can go into like, you know, a camera mode 
and be able to like turn the, you know, basically like go into third person or put a camera in the sky and watch yourself. We won't have that on console. However, on PC, they are adding a new function for the debug menu that will be a, and I, I got a video of this and Alan was really proud of this. This is really cool, but there'll be like almost like a drone camera that will be above the player you can start. So if you're, let's say you're building a base like, and you want to you want to speed it up, you can start the drone that will do a circle above you or a straight line across. And it'll basically film you. And uh, so that's going to be pretty nice for the creators. Good B-roll footage, good intro footage and stuff like that. But they are very proud of that, but we won't have that on consoles, unfortunately. I did ask if the game was going to launch on Xbox Game Pass when it comes to console. The answer was it should. It should be on Xbox Game Pass. Follow that up. If you are limited on the Series S or you have the old Xbox One, you should be able to cloud game this game. So stream it on cloud gaming, basically. So if you have the old Xbox One, the Xbox One S, you know, the old the old models, I still have a couple of them. You should be able to stream this game on there uh, through cloud gaming, which I think is great news. I think it's awesome because if you are limited on the Series S, at least you'll have this function. And plus it's on Game Pass. We will have no access to the past alphas on console version. Something I ask because I know there are some people in the community that like to go back and play alpha 16, 17, 18. So you will just be limited to whatever is on console at that time. There will be an offline mode. Uh, we were at PAX East, we were playing offline. We were not connected to the internet when we were playing. So, so if you are limited with your internet connection, you will be able to play offline. There will be no disc, however, released. This will be a digital only game. So no disc will be released. We were having a little fun and I did ask for some console specific items. I think it would be really cool if the PlayStation guys had maybe a specific weapon they could use or specific armor or maybe even like a special car they could drive. And same for the Xbox people, they had specific things. They were uh, receptive to that. They said they'd add it to the list, but they also have a lot still they want to do. But they, I did bring up a toilet pistol, adding that to the game. Uh, and he actually wrote it down as pistol with two L's, and that's maybe what he'll call it. But uh, we're, you, just, you have to find it in the toilet, and it'll be called the toilet pistol. So, and then Steve asked for, and this will only be on PC, unfortunately, but a better weather control in the debug menu. So, like, if you're creating or you're changing time, and you, you go back in time, and then it starts raining, you can just toggle the weather on and off, like kind of like Minecraft does. So, we did ask for that. That'll only be on PC, though, unfortunately. And I kind of mentioned uh, their roadmap and what they want. Bandits is still on the table. They still want bandits. It's looking like Alpha 23 for bandits, and that will be in the console version. So that'll be Alpha 23, though. So that'll be after the console version is released. And then we will have an update later that should add bandits. There was a lot of speculation about the helipads and the radios. And even I kind of mentioned this, so I'm guilty of this, but... Uh, what happened was in a, in a stream, Richard, the lead developer, mentioned telepaths. So people kind of ran with that and said teleportation, teleport, thinking the helipads would be able to travel to different traders. Each trader has a helipad, so a lot of people were thinking you could fast travel from trader to trader. And then I, I remember them mentioning something about a radio. You could pick up quests from radios in different POIs or at traders. They said that will not be in the game and that's really not on their roadmap at all. Any type of fast travel. So let's just nix that in the buck right now that there will be no um, fast travel in this game in the foreseeable future. I had some people ask about the adaptive triggers and the rumble support, if that'll be available on console. And they said, yes. Uh, they said the PS5 specifically, the adaptive triggers on there. They said it really works great with the AK-47. You can kind of press a little slow and you'll shoot at that rate and you'll press down harder and it'll shoot faster. And then the rumble, the rumble worked for me when I was playing the game. It worked, it worked just fine. And you can actually see in one of my videos, I said, man, the controller is rumbling right now. I think it needs a little more optimization because it was rumbling a lot when you're just walking through a POI, but maybe that's what they want. Maybe they want it to rumble all the time like that. Um, we brought up uh, some, some people in our community are visually or hearing imp impaired and we brought that up and they are very on board with that. That's not something that was really on the roadmap, but they are very interested in it and they're just limited with a small dev team. They're not like a Epic Games that can just hire 10 more people to say, here, go do visually impaired, you know, work and stuff like that. So, um, and they kind of asked for some examples and I brought up Fortnite, you know, has the on the screen when you hear noises off to the left and right, it'll pop up. 
and they really liked that. They said, yes, that would that's something we would really would love to add to the game. And so look for that maybe in the future. I don't know if that's going to be soon or later, but if you are, you know, maybe hearing impaired and you like something on the screen or if you're colorblind, they are looking into those things now to add to the game. So uh, good on the fun pimps for that. Mouse and keyboard should work. I didn't get a definitive answer for that, but uh, they said mouse and keyboard for console should work. I did ask, because somebody asked me if the seeds that are generated on Seven Days to Die are actually completely random, and he said absolutely yes. He said they you will never find one seed that's like another. You might have a couple cities that are similar and stuff like that, but he goes, these are completely randomized maps. Um, consoles will have Twitch integration. So if you are a Twitch streamer, you will be able to access the Twitch integration. They are very proud that they are the very first console game ever to have Twitch integration ever. So that's pretty big. So if that's something you want to look into it, if you have, if you have no idea what Twitch integration is, it used to be called mischief maker, but, uh, basically somebody can, uh, you know, on your Twitch stream can spawn in zombies, can spawn in loot crates, can spawn in screamers, you know, just whatever. And they can really have a lot of fun, but they spend money. You make money off of that. And so do the fun pimps, but it is a fun way for your viewers to interact with you. And I, I'd like to get more on board with that. I need to do that more. Uh, I don't stream a whole lot, so I need to start streaming more. But, but yes, Twitch integration will be on consoles at launch. I already mentioned the POIs, but it's going to have all the animals that we've seen released for, or coming to Alpha 22, all the POIs, all the weapons, um, all the armor systems, all the character models, and even really cool, out. this is an Alpha 22 thing, not just console, but Alpha 22. If you're wearing gloves, you will now see the gloves on your hands. And I saw we saw that in the stream, but that's pretty cool. I didn't know we didn't have that before. If you're just walking around with your hands, or even if you're holding a gun, you will have you'll be able to see the gloves you're wearing, the particular color all that man this was a big one in the stream and still is in the comments frames per second wow guys people are really concerned about frames per second do you know gta 6 is most likely going to release with 30 frames per second <laughs> are they going to get the same flack <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering okay do i have a, a particular specific number that it's playing at right now no i don't it's playing very well it looks really good Go watch my videos, guys. It looks like it's playing close to 60 frames per second. And honestly, is it that big a deal if it's running 55 frames per second? I mean, is that a deal breaker? I, I, I honestly don't know. I'm also a retro style gamer. I came up with Mario Brothers and NHL 95 and, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, all the old Maddens in the 90s. We, you didn't have frames per second. You had pixels per second. You had, or how many pixels were on a screen? Or how many lines were your TV had at the time going up and down? <laughs> I'm just different. I'm happy with, you know, 30, 40, 50 frames per second. But I do understand your guys' concerns with that. You guys are running high-end PCs, PS5s, PS5 Pros with monitors and 4K TVs. And you want that 60 frames per second. I do understand where you guys are coming from. I just want to say I think it looks really good. Um, from and I do play a lot of high-end games, so I think it looks really good. I'm just asking maybe calm down a notch on the FPS. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it looks good, guys. That's all the news I really have for console and Alpha 22 from PAX East. Like I said, there's a little bit more in this in the stream sprinkled in. I had a lot of fun just watching people enjoy this game. Uh, there were people that played the old console version that haven't played PC and they're like, oh my God, they didn't know he was at PAX East. And they're, so they're big smiles on their face because they've never seen the PC version. Or there's people that gave up the game, you know, were mad about the no updates and they stopped playing and then they're kind of here playing it and they're a little tentative. They were asking questions of the devs and they were just like, I heard a lot of, is this going to get updated? Is this going to get updated? I mean, are you guys going to make me buy this game again and then uh, not update? And there were some PC only players there that were having a blast with it. Like, man, this plays great. You know, it feels great with a controller. It plays good. Of uh, the FPS look good. And I also talked to a lot of different people that had no idea what Seven Days to Die were. They were there for other things. They came across Seven Days to Die and they said, well, this is kind of cool. This is like a, like a Fallout survival kind of game. And they were very intrigued by it. Uh, so it was very interesting to see the different pers perspectives for the game. 
Well, that's what we have so far for the console version. And I know there's a lot of things that's lacking. There's a lot of things that's not gonna have the PC does, but, but the console version is gonna have trader quests, a ton new POIs, a ton new weapons, and updates, which is gonna be awesome. So there's a lot of things in there that it's gonna be really exciting for console players to have, but yeah, it is gonna be lacking something. I really think this game needs crossplay, big time. I just know there's a lot of friends out there that have PS5s and other friends have Xboxes and you know, and if we could do Xbox, PlayStation, and PC crossplay, think of the servers we could have. I mean, just amazing servers. Finally, the PS5 guys and the Xbox guys can join the servers that the PC guys have had for so long. And possibly that would be the way that console will get mod support is through servers. You can join a server that already has all the mods on there. So that might be the only way you could maybe experience Darkness Falls or anything. Now, what about Blood Moons? We covered a lot on console. I did get my hands on Blood Moons. I got to play as the Hive Master. I was, uh, it was pretty fun being the Hive Master. Basically, a quick, a quick rundown on it. It is developed by Illogica Studios with the fun pimps overseeing it. It is also made on Unity, just like Seven Days to Die. But here's kind of the big thing. It's gonna launch on PCs only, not on consoles. No idea about console support at all. There's really, when I asked it, they were basically like, we don't know, not really in the plans. They would like to release it to consoles later on, but getting through the initial release is their main focus right now. It will launch with zero server support. So every server is gonna be peer-to-peer -peer or player hosted. So there's gonna be no matchmaking or anything like that at launch. They do want to add that eventually, but at launch, there'll be no matchmaking or developer owned servers, if you wanna say that. Now you can hop on with you and your buddy and play against the computer if you want. So the computer controlled hive mind or AI control hive mind. They did say that they're trying to make sure that the computer, you know, will do some random things and not be super uh, predictable or anything like that. But like I said, if you do wanna hop in just with you and your friend, you can do that and play against the computer. And honestly, having no servers at launch is really interesting to me that they would quote unquote, maybe rush this out without server support. I, I kind of feel like they're gonna launch this and yes, there'll be a lot of interest at first, but it's gonna die off. And then when they finally come out with server support, is that gonna be enough to bring back that player base that played it? I, I don't know, because I, I feel like not launching without server support is just, it's like going into battle without all your tools and weapons. I don't know, it just doesn't, to me, in my my personal opinion, doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. It's geared more towards a faster paced game. So the hive mind and the four players or how many players you have, have four minutes to prep. So the players are prepping, they're setting up their base, they're laying down, uh, you know, blocks and traps and stuff like that. They're trying to decide what they would. There's about five POIs on each map. There will be multiple maps launched at launch. They're thinking around four to six maps, maybe more if they can get more in. Each map will have some recognizable POIs. There's about, like I said, five POIs of each map. Now, the key is to work together. Uh, the one match I won, uh, I whipped their butt because they did not work together. If they had worked together, they would have stood a, stood a better chance. So if you can work together, you can almost, you know, set up some type of barricade, some way to funnel the zombies, maybe make a horde base, you know, where you you have a way like an AFK style or something that causes fall damage or, you know, a melee corridor or something like that. And if you watch Blood Moons, the blocks that you place down are like, the, they call them ghost blocks is what the devs are calling them, ghost blocks. They're like translucent blue blocks. That is only for Blood Moons. It's not gonna be on Alpha 22. I was a little worried those blocks are gonna be on Alpha 22, but no, they are not. That is a Blood Moon specific thing. They are in place to speed things up. Everything's about faster pace. You do have a hammer now that you have to have to place the blocks and upgrade the blocks. So it's almost like a build mode per se, like other games have. But realistically, you could play a single game in roughly 15 to 30 minutes because you have your four minute prep. And then if the hive mind kills the zombie, the players off really fast, then you're done. But you could have a longer fight. The zombies all have special abilities. Like Lumberjack is very good against attacking structures. He can destroy doors and blocks almost with one hit. The Hawaiian dude, the fat dude, explodes, and he also does a lot of block damage. You have the uh, the bikers that are more of a tank. You have the cops who are more of a tank, and they puke. 
and you can control the puke. The screamers do what screamers do normally. They spawn in a bunch of zombies. The nurse is a buff. It does a, I'm sorry, it does a buff to the other zombies. It can heal them and give them buffs. And then the other, and they, like I said, they all have different abilities. The way I kind of relate to it is kind of like Clash of Clans, where you have, let's say you have your tank zombies, like your biker, your cop, your Hawaiian dude. You want to put those in front because they're going to absorb a lot of the, you know, that's what they're going to focus on. They want to kill the Hawaiian dude before he gets to the base and explodes. Same for the cop before he gets there and can and hit you with a puke. But in the back, you're going to have your screamers that are constantly spawning zombies and more and more zombies. And you want to put your nurse in the back too, so they can sit there and, and do its buff and its healing. So kind of like Clash of Clans a little bit, you know, put your tanks up front and your other zombies in the back. And that's what I did when I was a hive mine. And I, like I said, I wrecked them pretty bad, but they also weren't working as a team, which worked in my favor. Overall, it was fun. Uh, it's very different con controlling the, the hive mine and the zombies. You start in a top down mode with the hive mine and you can, you can select any of the zombies and you can take over the zombie. I'm not going to be negative about it because I just, I need to play it more to really feel what it's like. Maybe it's meant to be this way. I don't know if it's like if we're over it's or if it's just janky or something like that. It really is just different. I'm a little concerned that I feel like they're trying to release the game before a lot of features are going to be there, like the servers, like possibly having consoles, something like that. And I get releasing it to Steam first and then getting it on consoles later. That's fine. But not having server support is very, very interesting to me. What are your guys' thoughts? I'd love to hear them about the console version and Blood Moons. What are you guys most excited for? I asked in the stream, and a lot of people are just excited to play it on console finally and not have crashing, to have Trader Quest, to have all the new POIs, all, different, all the different zombies. Are you guys excited for Blood Moons? Are you a little apprehensive? It's, I've been trying to gauge some of the reactions, and uh, most of the people are just like, why are you making this game? Put all your effort into the console version. And now that's what the Fun Pimps did. They hired another company to do this, and they're just overseeing it. But I do get that, that thought process of, why are you putting effort into this when you need to get this done? And I somewhat agree with that. But the, I, I do know a lot of people are apprehensive about it. Like, what is this? How, how much is it going to be? I don't really have a price point for it. Like I said, I tried to gauge their reactions a little bit. I don't think it's going to be 60 bucks. I think it's going to be in the, you know, the 20 to $30 range, kind of like console version. And, you know, playing it when I was playing as the high master and kind of watching the other survivors, I kind of feel like this would be a decent mobile game too. And maybe that's what the fun pimps are seeing down the line is, you know, more of a mobile style game, but I don't know. That's just my thought process a little bit, which a lot of things are going mobile nowadays. And that's where a lot of the money is. But I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Let me know what you think. What are you excited for? What are you scared about? What are you apprehensive about? all that great stuff and like I said be sure and keep an eye out for my trip video I'm gonna like actually do a video about the actual trip and then anything else I hear I'll be sure and let you guys know I'll see you see you guys later bye